What's up, what's up, y'all? What's up, what's up, what's up? This is a Coast Gear Fun Day. I'm back at it once again, dropping this knowledge for you on yours. And before I like to get into this, I'd like to thank my ancestors for giving me the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. And also like to thank you, you know, the person that's um subscribing and watching and doing the things, you know, as we go through this learn lesson of history, of African history. Now, this one comes from the Michigan Humanities Council. And this is Albion's West Ward School from Segregation to Civil Rights. Now, this is also part of a gentrification process we're going to talk about, you know what I'm saying, which is the number one problem in the black community. And to me, from my studies, which I'm going to show later, later on, that one of the key things to gentrification was integration. You know what I'm saying? So we're going to get to that and show it a little bit, you know, a little bit more later on, but not in this video. But it's going to show some of the pieces of that, you know what I'm saying? Remember, gentrification is the number one problem in the black community. If there is no black community, then there's no need to argue, fuss, and fight. You know what I'm saying? Or whatever the heck y'all want to do, unify, and that stuff. We got to have a community, a place, a space, a place and space of our own. Albion's West War School, from segregation to civil rights. Dr. Wesley Arden Dick, professor of the history of Albion College, specializes in civil rights history and teaches with Leslie, and co teaches with Leslie Dick. A first year seminar entitled A Sense of Place, Albion and American Dream. He is the second vice president of the Albion branch of the NLACP and is working on a West War School or History Project with historians Leslie Dick and Robert Wall. Albion, Michigan is a small town of rich history. In fact, it can be said that Albion's story is an American story. This narrative of our Heritage Grant Project are focused on the special racial dimensions of Albion history. West War School and Elementary School is the epicenter of our project. Albion had become an iron foundry industrial town in the last half of the 19th century. During World War I, European immigrants was cut off and northern industries went south to recruit workers. In 1916, Albion's Marble Iron Company sent labor recruiters to Pensacola, Florida. The arrival of 64 African-American men marks Albion participation in the great migration of blacks from the south to the north. The wives and the children of the laborers followed. Where would the African-American children go to school? Although aware of Michigan's ban on segregation in public education, local leaders reproposed Westwood School, Westwood, West War, excuse me, elementary school as an all-black school in 1918. Although whites made the decision it was the only way that African American children would have black teachers was to an all black all black school. Newly rooted from Jim Crow South, where black children were segregated in schools with black teachers, the Westward accommodation was favored by Albion African Americans in 1918, and so it remained for 35 years. In the aftermath of World War II, National attitudes regarding racial equality and justice were changing, and Albion and African American parents had come to view West Ward as a separate but unequal. In the fall of 1953, those parents held their children out of school. The boycott and the threat of legal action by the NAACP forced the Albion Board of Education to close West Ward School in October 1953. This West Ward School story began in an era of segregation and concluded with Albion's civil rights movement. After West Ward was closed, the site became a city park named after Robert Holland Sr., one of the African-American boycott leaders. The Holland Park Transformation Project is an individual to revitalize that space. Citizens also wanted to save its history. The West Ward Oral History Project include original interviews of 22 alum who attended West Ward. The interviews are conducted by Robert Wall, who attended West Ward, are the centerpiece for, for providing authentic voices, and they remind us of many good things that happened at West Ward, where the teachers were an integral part of the neighborhood. Let me read that again. Robert Wall, who attended West Ward, are a centerpiece for providing authentic voices and reminding us of the many good things that happened at West Ward, where the teachers were the integral part of the neighborhood. Remember, the teachers is all black. You understand me? The school is all black. Many West Ward graduates have fulfilled the best of the American dream. However, interviewees also confirmed that segregation and racism in Albion was not confined to the West Ward school, but it skinned to the movie theaters, the bowling alley, the skating rink, and the ice cream parlor. 
Westward School story of segregation and civil rights will be told through nine infographic and transsexual panels on display at the history of Highland Park. In addition, the interviews in the history we made are by smartphone web pages accessible, including an opportunity for community feedback. In 2016, the nation needs for conversation about race and racial history is urgent. This year also marks Albion's centennial year for the initial recruitment of the black workers. Today, Albion is one third African American. Due to deindustrialization, school of choice, and white flight, there is only one elementary school left in the community a de facto segregated predominantly African-American school with almost all white teaching staff. The West World School Oral History Project aspires to make this history viable and interactive for young people and older alike to relate to the history of the present and inspire all to strive for fairness and justice. Now, as you've seen before, as you talk about how Albion is now, the town of Albion, which is, you know, a de facto segregated community, which is predominantly African-American, which it is now because all the white people left, you know, after they came on through in a while. You know, and then, like I said, the community got busted down. You know, they said they had their own teachers. You know, they, they talk about the wonderful things that happened there. And they also explained, too, that segregation was just not in the north, in the south. It was in the north, too. You look at a whole bunch of cities like this. This is a small city. A whole bunch of, I bet you it was a sundown city, too. But you look at a whole bunch of cities like this. And you will see, like, yep, they were segregating black people, doing all type of stuff like that. But the thing about it, we had our own thing. You know, we had our own teachers. These students were created out of, in this picture you see right here, these students were created out of love. You know what I'm saying? And that's another thing we got to get back to with, you know, why we doing these principles. I don't care what you say about the founder of Kwanzaa, but the principles do stand. You know, that's how you're going to get out these problems. You know, the culture unity. You know what I'm saying? So this is this also provided jobs for black teachers. They working for the mile, you know, the, um, the steel mills and the iron factory and stuff like that. Some probably owned up their own stores in the black neighborhoods. You know, it probably was a, a pretty decent thriving black community down there. So we gotta look into. Anyway, this is a Coast Skill Fun Day. Much love, and I'll um, you know, subscribe to the channel. Peace.